Yeah, welcome, dear class. Uh, today being the seventh day of uh, May, uh, I know there are some people whose birthday is today, uh, whose wedding anniversary is uh, tomorrow. Uh, we wish them all well. And uh, we continue to thank God for the baby of uh, Esther. The baby is a member of our class. <laughs> and uh, she... Uh, she is going to be uh, one of the leading lights in Africa, you know, when uh, she grows up by God's special Amen. grace, by God's special grace, yes. So Amen. our lecturer for today is my head of department, uh, a juggernaut in educational technology, uh, who will uh, give us a lecture, a 40-minute lecture on uh, recent development in educational technology implications for STEM education. So, uh, my pleasure to invite Professor Silas Egbonwon to present his lecture. Over to you, sir. We are waiting, sir. Professor Silas, everyone, we are waiting. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we can hear you now. can hear you. Okay. Good morning. We can hear you. Alright. Alright. Uh, this morning we are talking about the emerging trend in educational technology implication for STEM teachers' education. Uh, let me see this video to appreciate how Professor as a good son, FUM, who has really been a pillar of support to this uh, center. And uh, I want to specifically appreciate our distinguished professor, Professor Peter Akishala Okebu Kalasia for Professor sir. of Science Education and Computer Education. I want to say thank you for the good work you are doing uh, here. We all pray for you. We all appreciate it. Uh, what you are doing. Now back to what we have for today. When we talk about uh, educational technology, there are two key words in this uh, is we have uh, education and technology. And when we talk about technology, we are talking about the systematic application of scientific knowledge to practical tasks. And education to be seen as a grown up process through which an individual acquires knowledge, skill, aptitude, and uh, experience. Uh, educational technology is a field that is concerned with the practice of using educational methods and resources for the ultimate goal of facilitating the learning the process. Thus, we could see it as an eclectic discipline. When we say eclectic discipline, we are saying that uh, it is relevant in all fields, all fields of uh, uh, learning, even in the industry. This science we're talk about, be it education, technology, medicine, everything is there. And it draws on 
uh, psychological theories of human learning to apply technology to all spheres of uh, life. Thus, it combines human and non-human resources for effective teaching and learning. Uh, it's based on uh, six uh, pillars. These are one to improve instruction when you're talking about quality, qualitative. Now, to educate more people because of the use of uh, technology, when you need uh, multimedia resources, a large number of people are educated at the uh, same time, you know, they are rich, they are taught. I just talk about the quantitative nature of the education. And then it also deals with learning more about learning, and that is research. And then to reform the curriculum, that is substance. When we talk about substance, yeah, you know, curriculum needs to be reviewed all the time so that it meets the demand and the yearning of the of the people. Uh, also, it's to improve the process of teaching and learning, and that talks about the methods. You know, uh, there are various methods by which learners could be uh, taught, and those are which teach, uh, teachers who could uh, present their uh, teaching to uh, the, the, the students, various strategies. And uh, lastly, to articulate the system that is structured and uh, information. Educational technology historically developed through the ages as technology developed. We have uh, the Stone Age, the Chalkboard, and Print Age, and the Mass Media Age. Uh, in the Stone Age, this is where natural objects like stones, pebbles, steel, I used to represent uh, ideas and uh, for uh, counting. And this period was a kind of uh, elitist period. Elitist in the sense that only few people had access to learning. Uh, not everyone had access to uh, uh, learning. Only the rich people, they apply teacher for their uh, uh, children, and uh, they are the ones that uh, have access to education. This was during the Aristotelian uh, period. But this one now moved to the next age, which is the chalk board and fringe age. So the uh, chalk board and fringe, uh, uh, the fringe age signaled the end to elitist type of education uh, through the invention of the printing machine by Gutenberg in 1945. The invention of the print machine now made it possible to print books and the people who have uh, access to learning. And because of this now, there is a uh, the need for people to have an uh, explanation of what they have learned. And they have uh, brought about the condition of people under a teacher to be taught. And uh, the job board is uh, used for a benefit uh, to them. So we now have books in the library, we now have groups in the library where people can go and follow uh, books for use. Then come the mass media age. Uh, the latest has been like development in science and technology of electronics and communication, and rather the global acquisition of uh, knowledge. And uh, this brings expansion to the concept of uh, educational technology. So the development of radio and the based on principle of sound through the airwaves, ushered in uh, specific learning to a large group of uh, people at different locations at the same time. That's why we call it uh, mass uh, education. So wherever the air, wherever anyone is, can hear, uh, can, can uh, explain the same thing at the same uh, time with others. For example, if uh, you tune to Radio Nigeria now, the same thing that is uh, being uh, broadcast at Abuja, we be had in Lagos here, uh, even at the remote uh, uh, village in uh, Ojo State or uh, Kano State. 
So that is uh, mass uh, education. And uh, when Father with uh, the invention uh, of television, I visited the site and sound, and this turned the whole world into a global village. Uh, television, radio, cassette, and computer, videotapes played major roles in the evolution in the art of uh, communication during the 1960s. And the electronic devices powered by computer technology became prominent in the teaching and learning system in the latter part of the 20th century. Uh, now, computer play, uh, computer role in education brought about a paradigm shift in educational technology. Where teachers are no longer the sole custodian of knowledge, instructional strategies and uh, methods become more learner uh, centered, the teacher centered, and the technology driven. And this one signal uh, the beginning of information and communication technology. You know, times are changing. Technology is changing. The teachers are changing. And the students too are changing. We don't have a uh, computer in the box, but it's found everywhere in handheld devices, laptops, and uh, laptops. And students now have access to them and can assess learning material. Uh, Advanced technology keeps abreast with the development of teaching and learning a proper solution to teachers and policy makers in handling every image problem. What am I saying here? That as things develop, so teachers have to keep abreast and uh, policy makers too. And it's educational technology that. Uh, can really uh, facilitate all this. So examples of imagine trend that can uh, be seen uh, is included in the following. Uh, we have a collaborative learning a constitution. No where the partnership between two or among more academic faculty members who are pursuing mutually interesting and beneficial research. It's no longer where somebody just sit down and be lacking his brain. You might have somebody who is in another faculty or in another department who share the same view with you. You collaborate, and that brings make your research to be a kind of a robust uh, research. And then we also have a blended learning. That's a combination of online educational materials an opportunity for interaction online with traditional place based classroom uh, methods. Uh, we have culture of change and uh, innovation. This supports for creation, think, uh, creative thinking, and advances efforts to extract social value from knowledge to generate new or improved product or services or uh, processes. Now what we are saying here that as the culture change and the you know, people interact, we to uh, be able to bring a new thing that we keep up right and we, we work along with the uh, environment. Uh, incidentally, I I want to acknowledge our distinguished professor here who has been uh, pioneering who has pioneered the uh, idea of a cultural uh, cultural uh, system. Thank you so much. We also talked about the uh, learning spaces. Uh, we have active learning classroom where we have smart classroom, learner center pedagogy, go away from the presentation mode, screen, tables arranged for collaborative work, wireless network, and so on. Not where we have a uh, in our class where the students will just meet the uh, teacher in front. Well, are uh, arranged uh, in different order of the way by which 
so open to the, the, the district to know the real uh, thing about the cyber security. So this is the body of technology processes and uh, practice designed to protect network devices, programs, and data from an uh, attack and that or damage by unauthorized access. Uh, access. You see, because of the internet thing now and a lot of things on the internet, people coming, you know, hacking people's uh, data, hacking uh, people's number and doing all sorts of things. That is the need to secure the cyber space. So it's another uh, thing that is imagined. So that whatever uh, uh, data anyone has cannot just be hacked by anyone like that. And uh, it's also to manage uh, student data and protect the privacy of younger ones. Hello? 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 Hello, am I on? Yeah, we are here, yeah. Okay. Sorry, please, for the break. No problem. So, uh, we also have the mobile uh, learning, and learning. No uh, education of training conducted, this is uh, training conducted by means of uh, portable computing devices, uh, such as a smartphone or tablet uh, computers. And uh, learning across multiple contexts through social and uh, content interaction. They use uh, personal electronic uh, uh, devices. Then uh, another common thing now is uh, artificial intelligence. This is where uh, uh, this intelligence demonstrated by machines in contrast to the natural intelligence display by humans and uh, animals. So the, the human intelligence is being uh, simulated you know, uh, by, program, by uh, programming it. The programming machine to think like human and mimic uh, the action of uh, human beings. Uh, before we learn of uh, this, I just want to look at the average uh, knowledge retention rate. With all these uh, new things emerging and uh, which we have discussed concerning the uh, educational technology, what do you think? How does uh, human being retain some of these things that have been uh, learned? We say that the tra uh, traditional lecture has 5%, discussion is in between 5% uh, and 15%. Uh, and then we have the uh, infographic taking fifteen percent, video thirty five percent, interactive gamification forty five percent, and virtual reality fifty percent. We say that we think where to go more of a virtual reality so that we can uh, have uh, a lot of people uh, there now that we tell uh, by uh, students. Now, what are the implications for STEM teacher education? Number one, democratization of education. When we say democratization of education, we mean that education is no longer the purview of the teacher alone. Not teachers and learners too, they have access. They can learn anywhere at any time. And they have the, 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 the material they can make a, a use of. Uh, it's no longer the, the, the computer sitting in the box, but we now have handsets, we have laptops that uh, students can uh, use for learning and teachers who can use uh, them. There is improvement in the quality and quantity of uh, education. Improvement in the sense that people have uh, access now to what is this? It, 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 it does it. Uh, people depend mostly on books. We still have books now, but we now have uh, uh, e-books. E so you can quickly get uh, the material you need from books through uh, the uh, online uh, process. 
and also the, 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 the quality. People can easily have people to criticize what they, they are preaching to assess them so they can improve on the quality. And uh, again, we have a data driven uh, academic uh, system. Data are easily available. So people, you can, you, 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 you can quickly check the data on a particular uh, study. And this helps uh, the research work. And then there is a uh, flexible and efficient instructional delivery. So it's no longer keeping yourself within the classroom. Now, for example, now, a lot of us have not been uh, in, the, in the class or in our offices. And yet, learning is going on. This is an uh, example of uh, the emergence in the educational uh, technology. Well, coming soon, uh, the Department of Science and Technology Education uh, is preparing something that will be very useful to both teachers and uh, students. Our parallel is a general delivery of uh, learning materials on uh, student uh, devices, which will not require much uh, data. We are working on this. And when it is uh, complete, we will let you know. Thank you for listening. Thank you so very much, our wonderful head of department. Uh, I'll tell you that I'm thoroughly impressed with your uh, your presentation, and I'm so enlightened, you know, today uh, to learn that uh, to learn all of these things about recent developments in educational technology, uh, and I'm particularly impressed by the plans of the department in uh, the project that is coming soon. So we will uh, throw the discussion open. Uh, for members of the class, let me just stop sharing the stop sharing the screen so that we will just a minute. Uh, yeah, so we can uh, comment, ask questions from my head of department. Uh, please, I want to warn you that you, you you are talking to my head of department, and so you have to be very very careful about what. You have to, you know, know that if uh, uh, my other department is not happy with me, they are not going to get salary uh, this month. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, 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 yes. I'm not in charge of money. Oh. Yeah, no, you are in charge of money. You are in charge of the department. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the floor is open. My own uh, quick contribution will be that uh, uh, how well. Are we preparing our students for the these emerging trends? How well are we preparing students in our department to be able to be active partakers rather than just users, consumers of uh, all these technologies that we are talking about? Uh, so that's my, my question. And then the other one would be, what's the outlook for the future? The outlook for the, let's say, another, uh, uh, say, 10 years. Because as you, I will imagine in, the, in, the, in one of the slides, you talk about Internet of Things. What Internet of Things will do Especially if 5G technology is rolled out, you can work on 4G, 5G technology. It, it, it will mean that everything, Internet of Things, and we also learned of Internet of Everything, the technology in use in the classrooms will be quite, quite different. So, how are we prepared for that world in Africa, in Nigeria? And in last week, how are we prepared? How are we preparing our students now for that world, which actually, actually is also here, of Internet of Things and then of Internet of Everything, maybe the other 10, 15 years. So this will be my two questions, which are my head of department will answer at the appropriate time. So I'm opening up now. If you want to take the floor, uh, please uh, just give me a minute now. You need to signify. 
uh, and I will note those who are, who will be intervening. I will take it from there. Another job, without you raising your hand, I know you asked something, so let me just write, write your name down. But I will call you at an at, 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 at appropriate time. Uh, Michael, no, you know why I'm not going to call you Michael? Because your 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 signal is very bad. It will make it ha 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 now, but I'm still going to list you. Uh, Michael, I did, I did will say, I'm still going to list you. The other time, we had to yank you up because it was making your, you have very, very bad network. I hope it's uh, better this time. So, uh, Michael, I will say it's on. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Harry Okore, yes, Harry Okore, yeah, uh, Francis, uh, uh, all right, um, Chinyere, Ikpa, yeah, thank God, Chinyere, you are asking questions today, thank God, today is a special day, today is a special day, yeah, okay, let's start with Chinyere, Ikpa, Chinyere, just, uh, Madam Chinyere, Ikpa, just, uh, uh, take the floor. I've unmuted you, by the way. Take the floor. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, while we are preparing to hear her, uh, let uh, Henry Okore take the floor. We can't hear you, madam. Uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, try, try, try. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. All your efforts to make sure that the measure up and so that. And also, I think we're going to silence. Hello, please, I can't hear. We also, okay, we cannot hear. Okay, fine. Henry, uh, go ahead, take the floor. Henry, Henry, take the floor. Yeah. Um, thank you, um, Professor Silas, for this wonderful lecture. I want to ask, what I used to know as an um, educational technology is um, those who actually make um, cardboards, class indicators, <laughs> uh, rulers, pointers, yeah. and so on. I don't know if they actually are concerning the present trends of ICT, if they have actually improved in terms of edutech for students, undergraduate students who are still in school. Are they being taught all these educational technology, new technologies in in our schools? Then secondly, what is the difference between educational technology and ICT education? Because I can see that EduTech is crossing towards what ICT education. It's not wise for us to merge these two um, programs together and have it as one particular course. Thank you. Sir. All right. Thank you very much. Uh... Henry Okori. I think what Henry is asking in part one of his question, uh, my HOD, is that our undergraduates that we are training now, uh, what how are we preparing them for a world beyond all these cardboards, carrying cardboards, carrying all these uh, things that I see them carrying about? How are we preparing them for that, for that world of you know, technology uh, that's uh, much advanced than all these cardboards, all these flashcards and things. I think that's one question you're asking. I would prefer now undergraduates, you know, in Lasso at least, uh, for that. Uh, let's see now. Mike, I will see if you can. Let, let, let's try you, Mike, I will see. Go ahead. Let's see whether your audio can cope today. Thank you, And thank you, Professor. I just want to know how the All right, it's very bad. It's still very bad. Oh, now that you're taking the floor. Oh, okay, no, no, it's still very bad. It's still very bad. I think you should do something about your network. Uh, so, now that you're taking the floor, please. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, I, think I will just start it up as contribution in question. I know for the channel technology, I'll break into two major things. Educational technology as a product and edutech as a process. It being a product using all these machines, devices, today I think teachers need not worry much about how to get learners 
to use these things because they're digital natives. Some exactly. Some just get to know. Exactly. The they know the thing. Yeah, that's it. Correct. Because our angle is the angle of the process. One, EdTech is technically at the general course for all students, for last that I know, that, that is doctoral level doing educational courses. Again, EdTech is now becoming a major course at, at um, undergraduate level, at master's level, and at uh, PhD level. Now, my concern on the area of process is along with the thoughts of Mr. Henry Okori, is that our, today when I look at our EdTech students, particularly undergraduates, they cannot, even, when we ask them to mention trends in the technology, they cannot even mention. Let's talk of how to explain the process and usage in the classroom. A number of them have not gone on any online classroom. They have not used all these facilities. How do we want them to become better educational practitioners when they move outside classroom? Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, let's see. I think I had uh, uh, one other person. Uh, that's Francis. Francis, take the floor. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, sir, I want to ask... From the lecture, I understood that uh, there is cyber security in place in educational technology. Why is it that it is still rampant? People hijacking uh, people's Facebook accounts, bank accounts, and all the rest of them, and then doing the justice with their, uh, their accounts. Is the cyber security no, no longer in place? That's one. Two. Um, the success of uh, educational technology in, um, in uh, passing information or in teaching, or learning and teaching, just as we are doing here, is a function of the network, power supply, and even cost. Now, most of the time, we have these network challenges. Even our distinguished prof at times in battles with the network, changing from one network to the other. And then it causes a problem. Now, what efforts are they making to, you know, maybe design uh, an equipment that can pin down network and make it steady, and the the, the user will have a, com a constant and uh, uh, good supply without fluctuation. Thank you very much. Uh, now, totally, sir. Okay, totally, yes. Yeah, in all our researches, we have been taking... In all your research, I've told you, there's no researches. In all our research, my friend. Yes, sir. In all our research, we have been taking into consideration people in rural area and those in urban area, as well as even socio-economic status of, you know, students or the, uh, the, the respondents. Now, people in Lagos here might not know that there are some areas where people don't even have light. They may not even have access to network. They may not even have access to power, uh, power to uh, power their their video, uh, their laptop, or their systems. Yet, after secondary school, these people are involved in taking jam that is UTMP CDT, computer uh, based. Now, what effort? is the system making to reach these people in rural areas and to bring them uh, up right. so that by the time right. they enter right. university, they will be able to keep All right. in. Uh, thank you, Francis. Thank you so much, Francis. Uh, I will now yield to my head of department, Professor Silas Sigmar. But before I do that, Francis, I need to ask you a few questions. Francis, are you ready uh, for the questions? Yes, sir. When was the first thief in the world? When was the, when do you think the first thief in the world uh, was identified. The first thief, Barawo Oji, or whatever you call it in the book. First thief, thief, somebody who's stealing something. When? The first thief in the world. It's from Major Brody, sir. <laughs> if I don't let the Yebode people here, the first thief in the whole world. Okay, fine. When will we have the last thief in the world? When, 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 when will thiefery or burglary end? When will it end? That's what I don't know. Sir. Okay, but it can never, it can never end. You see, I'm, ask, I'm answering that first question of cybersecurity. It can never end. You see, the, 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 the thief is always upfront, knowing what you are doing to prevent him or her from stealing your, your, you know, stealing your property. So he or she will be devising new means, new means. So it not behoves you. 
to also put your mind in put yourself in the mind of a thief who will come and be sealing those holes where the thief can come in uh, can come in to us. So that you know cyber security is just about awareness, it's just about your ensuring that normal places where cyber attackers, people who will want to harm you, will want to come in into your network. Either as a standalone like my computer now or any network. So no, no, no matter how you try, did you know that one of the safest places in the world in terms of in terms of cyberspace is the Pentagon? Pentagon of the US. Now the Koreans, not Koreans, are hacking into it. Chinese hacking into it. The Americans hacking into it. So it's all a game. It's all you can never never end. Just forget it. Now we have uh, VC and I have uh, struck a deal with the uh, one major cyber security organization in Nigeria. It's actually one of those covering the cyber space of Nigeria security, and uh, we've gone to him. So our students will be going to uh, that 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 company uh, to for practical training. But you see, we've got to hear from all those students who have been there, and also from the uh, managers that look, there's just no way. All you are doing is learning, being trying to be a, a jump ahead of the of the cyber criminals, but they're also trying to be a jump ahead of you. So it's, it's, it's a question of uh, competition now. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest, exactly. Survival of the fittest. And that's why you have all this training, cyber uh, 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 certified ethical hacking and the different levels of it, where you want to learn. And so they engage them in the banks. Okay, look, look at all our banks. They will come. I just got an alert from my bank to say that, oh, watch out for so and so. And the banks have the best experts in cyber security, GTB, UBA, Zenit, all of them. They have. But all these smart boys are always there, you know, to come to hack to or to harm you. So that, that that's what I thought. Uh, I don't know what, what my other department will say about it. But cyber security, we just do the best we can and leave the rest to God. On the matter of network, you see, there, there's no way. Go to the U.S. When I go to the U.S., if you are in a place, you say network challenge. Yeah. My friend, nothing that's human-made, mind you, I've not said man-made, because that's not the correct nomenclature now. It's human-made. Nothing because the woman will say it's only man they make something. So nothing that is human made can be perfect. Nothing. I saw the head of department now talking about uh, little data. You see, there are some organizations that will. It, it's quite easy for you to do all of this without. Uh, okay, there are some sir. platforms where you're going to have uh, very little data or no data to, to do that. But there are limitations. In fact, we are with our center. We are working with the National Investors Commission. There are some. Uh, uh, just, uh, yeah. No, just a minute, uh, HOD. No, just a minute. There is the uh, uh, NGREN. NGREN has a lot of uh, of reserve service that we are going to tap into. It's not it, it, at the end of a long day. It's not you are not going to get the, the thing to be free. So HOD, I uh, yield to you uh, to address the questions. We have about uh, ten more minutes. HOD, you have the floor, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, so you asked how we can be in the department and uh, what our plan is for the next uh, 10 years. Uh, what I believe is that everything is a, a gradual uh, process. Oh, yes. Uh, if we look at the way things are now, we have to make a way out to see that uh, we take with, 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 with the time. For example, like this is not happening now that everyone is kept at home because of the uh, inadequate preparation. A lot of uh, and the uh, problem is reaching out to the students. Uh, in fact, well, I just want to thank God for the leadership you have given us in the, in the department. I was discussing with the uh, team on uh, Monday or so. And I discovered that uh, it was the uh, only faculty of uh, education that uh, was going on uh, more than any other uh, faculty. And apart from that, when uh, the team started uh, telling me that uh, he didn't hear anything from the uh, uh, department, and I told him, before other departments started uh, talking about all these other things, even when the normal class was on. Yes. We have uh, put that this in the department. Sure. Uh, and you were the first person to study the business that was happening. Now, 
the father did to him. But he didn't know that the family has gone and even before the university was done. So, now concerning the preparation, we have seen the transaction on the wall. Maybe I have not finished with the the person who was talking about the use of carbon and all these things. Uh, for the past two sessions now, we have changed the way we handle the uh, nuclear technology uh, course in the undergraduate year, that production uh, class. So most of the time, they will sit there and meet the whole uh, faculty with all their cargoes and all that. And we believe that. If we are to move with a new trend of things, they don't need all those, uh, all those things. We have uh, the uh, computer, we have the uh, smartphones, yeah, we can uh, reach them, we can give them assignment, and they do this thing as well, submit uh, uh, online. We are working uh, on this already. Congratulations. But still, uh, like I Congratulations. said, everything is uh, gradual. Congratulations. So, uh, and uh, that is the need. We are working on uh, also reviewing our curriculum which is part of uh, what I said about the uh, internal te uh, technology. We are reviewing the curriculum for me with the pace of three now. Uh, there's another question that each change is an age of change, and people are willing to change with the time, giving up the old and taking what is new. There are some people who will and who cannot uh, change, but we have to be among those who will change. So we have to really review the curriculum to me with the, with the, with the trend of things. And they also make our students relevant in the class when they get to the class. Yes. Why we see, we, we, we cannot totally get to show the old, uh, like uh, someone talked about the rural uh, area. What is uh, suitable now when we talked about improvisation? What is suitable for the, 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 the area? They can see make use of things. But why we improve uh, uh, on it? Uh, a person talked about the uh, cyber. Uh, security. It's a new thing now. And I got to say, everything is uh, gradual. People have to be, unless we have enough people that are trained uh, on cyber security, who will checkmate all these people hacking uh, uh, into, into people's data, into people's platform. There still need to be more training. And uh, one, one thing I see is that when a new thing is developed, somebody will find a way to counter the. the the, 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 whole, the whole thing. Italy in our country, I remember some years back when they started this uh, box uh, uh, phoning. Like, you know, young men, they will go and file uh, their coin and drop it inside there. And they will phone for hours without spending <laughs> anything and they will take their phone back again. <laughs> but people who didn't need know that they're not going to do that. So when we are talking about cyber security, we have to wrap up two, two more minutes, two more minutes, two more minutes. Two more minutes. Uh, and then, uh, and uh, I talked about uh, the light in the rural uh, areas. Well, the way things are, not all the places could have a uh, like they can see make generate, use of a generator. Government could provide you for the school. So where you guys can uh, have a uh, they can also uh, uh, make use of uh, solar energy to power things for the uh, teachers. Thank you. Thank you so very much, our wonderful head of department of science and technology education. I'm going to unmute everybody for us to give a round of applause to our HOD. So let's, let's uh, thank our HOD for the job. So very well done. So